Hey all, welcome to another installment of my Devise Let's Build series. So this is a mini series within a series of me extending Devise in such a way that might be useful to you. I've come into some of these extendabilities uh, in my time creating apps and whatnot to hook into the Devise gym and just kind of manipulate it to work with me instead of against me. So there's quite a bit of documentation out there, but I noticed no one's doing any kind of video tutorials on how to do some of these things. So so this specific instance is going to be how to sign in anywhere. And traditionally in a device app, you have a path to users sign in. That's like the default that comes with the gym. You can extend that to say anything else. It would be something, maybe a different URL. So just log in. You can, you can customize that already with device. I believe I've talked about that in an earlier video, just customizing the routes of your authentication. But what if you want to add like a login form, say on the home page, which as you can see, I have one in this demo on my just home controller at the moment. So we can go ahead and log in. Um, I'll do so real quick. You see nothing's fancy about this app at all other than, hey, welcome Andy, because that's the current user. And then I can log out and we sign in successfully. So all this is just traditional CRUD style app um, with Rails, but the idea is I want to be able to log in anywhere. So say on the home page, I could display a login form for returning users instead of them having to go click a button, navigate to that form and, you know, go about their business. Now there are some caveats to doing something like this. Like when you do click, say this login link, it's going to go ahead and go to that direct base path to the user sign in. That's something that I feel you should probably have both edge cases. So maybe you can have a login form anywhere, but you should still have that dedicated path to log in. I feel like that might be a good practice that way with things like SEO and whatnot, you can have already hooked up and just kind of a, a absolute path to certain things in your apps, say if it takes off or someone's using it for a lot of uh, a long time. So let's talk about getting this started. I'm going to actually create a new app. I have this default base one running. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one in my sites directory. So I'll do it from scratch using my kickoff tailwind uh, template. If you don't know, I probably mentioned this in many videos so far. I do have a Git repo I'll link to with this template. Basically, it's just a way for me to save time when I'm doing these things. So I don't have to reconfigure device every time I start an app. It also comes with tailwind CSS, which is a nice utility for framework. Um, and some other bells and whistles. So I extend device to have a username and a name field and uh, a couple other gems that we'll use maybe later on as I, I scale up uh, other tutorials. So let's create a new app and I'll use that template. I've downloaded it into my sites directory. So I'll be just doing a relative path to it as you'll see here. So I'll say rails new and why don't I increase the size here? Screencasting. All right. So Rails, I'll go to Sites, and then Rails New. And then the app name, I'll say Devise, Sign. We'll say Login Anywhere, just to make it a different name than the old one. And then I want to pass that template. So you do dash M to do so. And then the relative path to that template on my system is Kickoff, Tailwind, and then Template. RB. So specifically, you can link to this template that RB locally. Um, you could probably do it from the GitHub repo itself, but I haven't really tested that. So I'm not sure if it would work uh, perfectly, but I should check into that. But besides that, let's install this. It's basically going to go through and configure Rails for us. going to create a new fresh app, add Tailwind CSS, uh, configure device, and some of the routing and database related stuff. So I'll be right back when this is complete. All right, so our app is done. You noticed it did a lot of stuff for us. I won't go into super detail on what it did, but basically it just sets up an app so I don't have to configure a bunch for these tutorials. Um, it might benefit you too if you're practicing with Rails. It's kind of time consuming to set up device every time or something, but it is good practice to do so just so you know what you're doing. So let's CD into our app here and I will just run the server just to give you a foundational look at what we're looking at. It is on Rails 6, which recently shipped finally. So that's pretty exciting. All right, so this will refresh and we'll just have some text here instead of this login form. It's 
got to compile some assets first. There we go. So this is the base template I usually ship with. Um, I'm not ship with, but this is where I start. And all, basically, as you can see, it just has some bells and whistles already styled and whatnot for devise and just got the Tailwind framework set up and everything. So what I want to do is say, OK, we have our home path here. And when I create this app, it actually creates a home controller. So I'll show you in code. When I run my template, uh, the kickoff Tailwind template, we get a home controller for free with that. And that's just a way to kind of tell a device where to redirect to, say, after you sign out and whatnot. It requires that as part of its configuration. And I just choose index. So we have the same views for such things. So just home and index. And inside index is what you see when I just started that app up. So it's this stuff. So it's pretty basic there. Uh, the home controller does pretty much nothing other than exists and has an index action on it. So we can render that view. And we have a default device configuration, which has just some styled forms using Tailwind CSS that I've used uh, for a while now. So I use a, a nice little content for wrapper, which inside shared is the actual form wrap classes. So I don't have to repeat this on each of those views. So it's a nice content for and yield concept with Rails that I really love. At the core level, device handles everything on the user side. So when we created the new app, it also created the user model since device requires some sort of resource to use. Uh, that could be anything from like an account model or a profile model or user, et cetera. But user is kind of the, the trend. Um, so that might be where you could start. Uh, the same is true for like a team or something. So with this, a lot comes with device and some of the controller logic doesn't even live in our app. It's in the gym it itself. So we don't have like a user user's controller as a result. And that's fine. We can use device pretty much for everything we need and get away with it. That's the point. It kind of extracts all that hard logic of authentication away from the app. So you can focus on actually building the app you want and just have that stuff ready to roll. Now, when you want to change something is where it gets a little hard. So you have to hook into device and kind of configure it in such a way. So often that's either a at setting up like a new registration controller or a login controller or something like that, or extending it to what we're going to do is um, include the logic to log in anywhere in the app. So what that's going to look like is within a helper file. And I'm going to choose the application helper file so we can basically render a login form anywhere. Um, it's the application level. So if you were to scope this, say, to a specific controller, you can push this in a specific helper and just let it scope to those views only. Uh, but in this case, maybe to keep things progressive later on and not have to reinvent the wheel each time, we could just make it a global thing so we can always include a login form. So what I'm going to do is first create the view to give you some concept of what this could look like. And instead of just like throwing it in home or device or whatever, I'll create a new folder called shared. And that can be whatever you want to call it. Inside that, I'm going to create a partial called like login.html.erb. And what we can do is go into device and sessions, which is traditionally the user's sign in form. So if you go to login here, it's this path. So this is going to correlate to what we see here in the session's new full, um, form. So what I can do is copy this code over, paste it in the login partial, and nothing's going to happen now. We don't have this imported anywhere. So why don't we do that in the home layout index file, I mean. So I'll actually just get rid of this. I'll render the login form. So that's going to come from shared, just like render partials, or excuse me, shared and login and we're going to get an error at this point so right now we're not on home page if we go back boom it doesn't know what these resource uh, variables are resource name url session path etc all that stuff comes from the device controller and typically that's just routed through as we could see in uh, most of these template files within device. So you see registrations even has the resource stuff. So that's kind of an open-ended way to say whatever value you give me, say it's user or uh, account or profile, whatever you set up for your app, maybe it's an admin uh, specific use user that you create, that's the model. 
So in our case, it will be user. That's going to pipe through and just kind of do the magic of device. So how do we get around this? That application helper method methodology I was just talking about is where we're going to look. Now it's not a be all end all solution, but it does work. So what I want to do is open the application helper up and we're going to type in a, a few uh, methods to kind of distinguish what these helper methods will be. So we'll get access. If you remember in the login form, we kind of need to define what these are going to be in our specific use case. So this kind of overwrites some of the extendability of device. So if you have more than one use case for device, say you have a user for device and an admin for device, this gets a little more complicated. But in our case, we're going to just have that one scoped thing and one resource for device. In this case, it'll be user. So hopefully that's making sense. It should in it maybe a little bit more in a second. So I'm going to say a resource name will be user. So we'll have a um, that and then re resource, you could say at resource well, instance variable or user not new. So we're setting explicitly this to users. Notice that. And then in the resource class, we'll have user itself. And then finally, the one, the main one we can hook into for device sake is define device mapping. And you'll set an instance variable just like we did for the one above and set that to device.mappings and then user. Cool. So with any luck, if we refresh this page, we should see a login form. So we, we set those variables. So now there's an instance of what we're looking for. And that's pretty nifty. So in this case, I don't have a user set up yet. So I'll go ahead and create one. Okay, so okay, we get redirected back to the home page because that's the root path we set up for device to re to kind of use as that redirection. We still have the login form, but notice we're we're logged in. We have the logout button here now. I recently pushed an update to my kickoff template to include that. I'm not sure why I didn't have it. So sorry if you've noticed that. Um, but what what do we we don't want someone to sign in again? They've already signed in. An error will definitely render each time because they're already inside that session. So instead on index, if they're saying like, say, if user signed in, and this is very bare bones, I do something fancier here. You could render that login or you would render that login, but you could do like else. We'll do the opposite here, paste that in. And then we could say H1, some tailwind stuff here. So like text to Excel font bold text black welcome get the current user dot name assuming they create a name so if we're signed in this should redirect to hey yeah, that's me cool so we can just go about our business so you see how that works now the catch is if you log out, we're still, you know, we, we can still sign in on the home page, which is pretty powerful. You could sign in on any controller for the matter of fact. So the application helper is available anywhere in the app. So you're, you're able to create another instance here, maybe a new controller, pass that partial through since we're in the shared folder, just like we did in the index of the view here and just kind of do this logic. Now you might even go inside the shared login. Uh, route and do some more more of that log login um, or conditional stuff in there so you don't have to keep typing if else end you know so you might think about that so the partial does everything you just have to include it in the page but that's just a high level of what's actually happening so i would clean that up a bit but other than that that takes care of what we were going for so we can go ahead and just sign in again just to give you a concept. Okay, great. So we're in, we're still redirected to home, but we don't have the form anymore because we are doing that conditional logic of the user who's signed in. So that's kind of the quick workaround. It's a few methods you add to your application helper. It does stick you in the mindset of you're stuck with kind of the user concept in your app, 
most apps I use personally, I only use Devise for a single resource. So I think this is still valuable to use. Um, if you run into an instance where you need to map certain resources, like say a user or a profile. So you've got multiple device folders for different resources down here. That might get a little trickier. Um, I haven't run into that yet, but I just wanted to share this and kind of talk through it as opposed to just having someone check out the wiki on devices, Jim, uh, GitHub repo, and not be sure how to actually include this logic in. Now there's something to be said that you could include this in say a, a shared uh, service or something. So you just include a module in, instead of throwing it all in the application helper. But I think for what this is, it, it, you know, it does the job. So I wouldn't sweat it. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, more of these to come. There will be future stuff, including OmniAuth uh, logins, um, inviting users to a platform. We'll use a third party gem to extend device called uh, device, uh, invit, what is it? Invitable or something like that. I can't remember. Um, and then maybe something like log in as other users, if you're an admin user, so you can kind of impersonate them. So more of that to come. Uh, I hope these are valuable. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Hello rails is my new course on Ruby on rails. I'll teach you Ruby on rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.